Good evening, this is TV Nation. I'm Michael Moore, and I'm here with Susie Brewster, wife of Congressman Bill Brewster from Oklahoma. If I were going to shoot you, I would probably shoot you right here, because I think that's a vital spot. Yeah, I don't get any ideas. If I just wanted to wound you, I might aim at other parts, but you're pretty dangerous. You know why I don't want to shoot this one? It looks too much like the network executives I have to deal with. <laughs> I'm just kidding, okay? You know, Americans love their guns, and I'm an American, and I love my gun. And tonight, myself and the other correspondents of TV Nation will take you on a journey through guns in America. Talks to those talk show people. Guys, you called him retarded. I meant to call you retarded. No, I meant to call you retarded. You know Wait a second. Michael Moore threatens to move the show to New Jersey, and the mayor of New York is on the spot. You know, we're going over to New Jersey to see what they can offer us, and you know what you can offer us to sort of help us, you know, make up right. our minds. After serial killers like John Wayne Gacy and Jeffrey Dahmer. What if a very strange man moved into the house next door? Wouldn't the neighbors notice? Well, many years ago, we were we all had cesspools and we all got hooked up. Maybe that house was never hooked up. And be sure to join us for more of Gun Night on TV Nation. Whoa! That was cool. <laughs> I caught up with congressional wives Susie Brewster and Cecile Tawson to talk about guns, sex, and politics. Your ultimate goal is to just smatter it. Mm -hmm. Michael, when What's they that? just when you just dis they disintegrate to gunpowder and the whole sky explodes, that's the ultimate. That's the real It's like high. a firecracker, you know, like they burst out all the stars. Yeah. Just powder it. That's when you know you've arrived. Yeah. Okay, I want to get there. Yeah. And I want you to help me. You just put one in the bottom. Put one in the bottom. Okay. And you're done. Thanks. Stay with me, okay? Okay. Don't leave me. All right. All, All right. You have to say is pull. What's the word? Pull. Pull. Loudly so he can hear you. Pull! Did I get it? No. Right. I didn't start no. hunting with my husband until I figured out I was going to be alone from September to January, and I didn't think that was neat. That's exactly uh, right. Really? So if he was exactly. going to be a hunter, right. I think right. women tend to do what their husbands do. It's an enjoyment. If they love them. Mm -hmm. a so if you love your husband, and if he shoots guns, if he hunts, he's a hunter. You join him. Get out right there beside him. and join him, right? That's, right? That's what keeps families together. And if That's your husband's right. if your husband's a congressman and he has a gun, you just join right up. She shoots. She scores. Whoa! <laughs> which of the, which of the following most closely describes your husband? Semi-automatic. Muzzle loader. Saturday night special. Lever action. Semi-automatic. Semi-automatic. And, and would you describe him more uh, as a shotgun or a rifle? A kind of Both. Uh, more of a rifle. You know, I, I always thought the best way to go duck hunting was like with a flamethrower. Because then <laughs> you'd get the bird and cook the meat all in one. That's Just an cool. idea. <laughs> How many congressmen's wives would you say shoot guns? I don't know. The first time I had about 20, but that's all the capacity I had. Mm -hmm. And the second time, um, I had about the same number. What, what do you do in Washington? Um, I'm legislative director for Congressman Brewster. He's a good member to work for. Yeah, that's what taught I taught me how to shoot. Yeah? The congressman <laughs> taught you how to shoot? Yeah, he did. And he's taught his wife? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And he's progressing through the, our whole staff, I think. Really? <laughs> Pull! Pull! 
Who's a better shot, you or your husband? Oh, he is. He's been shooting for 45 years. The congressman? Yes. How long has he been shooting? How old was he when he first shot? Three. Three years old? Yeah. Shot off his daddy's knee. Well, he shot off his daddy's knee. Where's right the other there. one? Huh? Where'd he go? Oh. How did I do today? What would you say? You did well. You did very huh? well. You're not a, a novice marksman, but you did well. I did well. But, you did well. But, but could I be a congressional wife? No. Hmm, that would be Sorry. hard. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you had Sorry. an operation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hard. <laughs> A congressional spouse, but not a congressional, yeah, a congressional spouse. Wife. Yeah. And we need more women in Congress anyways, right? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Coming up on TV Nation, do you really know who your next door neighbor is? There's something there. It's, it's something funny about it. <laughs> Do you know all the names of the people who live next door to you? Um, actually, I don't. She's mm -hmm. no. Yeah, like three years ago, moved in? No, maybe ten. Ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, boy. You have no idea I don't what... talk to my neighbors. <laughs> you think it's safe out in Long Island? It's very safe. Uh -huh. Quiet? Yes. Peaceful? Yes. Serial killers? Not that I know of. Let's say you heard a chainsaw in the middle of the night. What would you do? I'd be questioning why it's going on in the middle of the night, just because he's... And then you go back to peace. bed. But yes, yes. We went out to Long Island, and we sort of moved in to see what the neighborhood is like. Oh, you, know? you did? Yeah. 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 So uh, take a look. And... Did you ever notice when they arrest a serial killer, the neighbors come out and say what a nice, quiet guy he was? A very gentle guy, the kind of a guy that would help me bring packages into the house. John Wayne Gacy murdered 33 young men while living in a quiet, suburban Chicago neighborhood. So what kind of neighbor was he? Very good neighbor. Jeffrey Dahmer kept body parts in a drum in his tiny Milwaukee apartment with no complaints from the neighbors. John Esposito used a backhoe to dig a torture chamber beside the Long Island house where he held 10-year-old Katie Beers captive. Nice, gentle, caring, funny, just a simple guy. In a house surrounded by neighbors, John Wayne Gacy often began his grisly work well after dark. Did you ever hear anything that would indicate to you that there was foul play going on over there? No, other than maybe doing some construction work at night, outside a little loudness that way, sawing and things like that, but I attribute that to his work. How do they get away with it? Why don't the neighbors ever notice? What does a maniac have to do to tip people off? To find out, TV Nation rented a three-bedroom house on a quiet, tree-lined street. We hired an actor and moved him in. We supplied our actor with the props he'd need to impersonate a typical serial killer. Drills, bomb-making equipment, axes, toys, and women's clothes in various sizes. I remember you. As the days passed, we watched and waited. In broad daylight, our actor walked among the neighbors with the tools of his trade. No one noticed. Next, we played a tape of gunshot sounds. No reaction. We dug our first hole in the lawn that night by flashlight. Just like the evenings that followed, no neighbor complained. We worked with our tools through the night. No visits from the police. We had large metal drums delivered. Jeffrey Dahmer only brought one 55-gallon drum to his home. We brought home 10. No one noticed.
We hired a backhoe to help with our digging. Just like when John Esposito used a backhoe to dig his dungeon, no one said a thing. Only the dog noticed something was wrong, but no one heard his cries for help. We splattered our front window with red paint. Reaction, nothing. The next day was garbage day. We put a little of the same red color on an old mattress. to get some attention around here anyway. An eccentric loner playing nursery rhymes outside his home seems pretty creepy. But it didn't seem to bother any of the neighbors. What would happen if we changed our address to 666, the biblical number of the devil? No problem with the neighbors. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all seemed to be the local motto. Or maybe it was, if you can't stop in, smile as you pass by. Whatever, no one stopped in, no one said anything. With the evidence of a demented mind still in plain sight, we went to see just what the community thought of its newest neighbor. The first person we spoke to lived directly across the street. Do you know the people across the street? Um, it's, it's something there. It's, it's something funny about it. It's, they just uh, bought the house, and, and we were looking strange things in there. Good garage, you know, like half paint at yeah. night. It was about 11 o'clock at night, and you see all the red light, you know, you should come at night, and then you see one funny thing there. He didn't do that digging himself. Oh, there was an actual backhoe. Oh, really? And, uh, oh, many years ago, we were, we all had cesspools, and we all got hooked up. Maybe that house was never hooked up, and maybe that's what's being done now. And no one's notified the, um, authorities? Uh, What's to notify if the man owns the property, you can, you know... Paint it whatever yeah. color. We don't know if that's a base paint for something else, or we why anybody would paint half a door red. Yeah. yeah. The red on the picture window, we're not quite certain what that's all about. Over five days, we played 30 gunshots, stacked and restacked 55-gallon drums, constantly dug holes, and splattered mattresses, windows, and doors with red fluid. No one cared. No one phoned to complain. No one stopped by to ask about the noise. Heck, no one even said hello. We don't coffee clutch, but we do occasionally go to each other's homes. If you could change anything about this neighborhood, you know, what would you, anything you would? Nah, I'd keep it just like this. Just like this. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you. Like it? This place is great. It really is great, especially if you're a serial killer who wants to be left alone. And if you're ever caught here, you can be sure that the neighbors will tell all the reporters what a nice person you were. So quiet, so polite, so normal. Louis Theroux found an exotic weapons shooting range in Arkansas. Robert Lee Warren is the owner and a real gun enthusiast. I was intrigued by your ad I saw in a newspaper. It says the safest place on earth. <laughs> Who's going to attack here? Who's going to attack here? I don't know. Maybe the, uh, <laughs> the ATF. Oh, no. No. Why no. not? Because all of this stuff is legal. Actually, anyone 
that is a citizen of the United States and is over 21 and does not have a felony can legally own a full automatic weapon. Now, is that frightening or is that a good thing? Uh, it's actually a very good thing. Really? Yes. We should all have as many machine guns as we need. I think so. Okay, what we've got here, we've got the uh, the American Tommy. This is the World War II version. Yeah, what's this one? This is the British Dan. What's this one? This is the Uzi. I noticed, I couldn't help noticing, there's a gun over here that uh, is pointing up in the air and it seems to be on a tripod. What's that all about? This is a 60 millimeter mortar. This gun here has a range of one mile. Yeah. With a casualty radius of 50 yards. Okay. Is that good or bad? Uh, depends on which end of it you're on. Okay. Can we fire that? Sure can. Now, for people who have got mortars and are using them at home in their backyard, what advice do you have for them? <laughs> Make sure you have a big backyard. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's put something in it that's going to blast right. out. Is this uh, mortar option available to your regular customers? All of it is for rent. So anyone can come in and, uh, and use and blast off a couple of rounds of mortars? Oh, definitely. I mean, I get people here from all over the world. The only time I've ever had a problem is one day I had Serbs and Croats show up at the same time. Okay, let's have a go. All right. Two, three, four, five. Now listen, you can hear it. Whoa! That was cool. Most people are into guns. The smell of the burning powder is an aphrodisiac. Really? Oh, sure. How do you know that? Personal experience? <laughs> yes. So I think I can smell... You can. What's that? That's the black powder. Is it getting you going a little bit? When did you, when was it that you first got your taste for gunpowder, as it were? I like to explain it this way. When my mother removed me from her breast, she gave me a gun as a pacifier. Under cover of night, Louis got to shoot one of the assault weapons. You see that silhouette out there in the water? Yeah. Shoot that guy. Figure that's a VC coming across a rice paddy at, at this time of night. Okay, ready? Yeah, go for him. Nearly got him. He's got getting him. away. Well, you're going to have to get him. Is that it? That's it. Oh. Did I get him? Did I even hit him? I don't think so. See, this is why we didn't win Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> And now, the official TV Nation poll. 229 Americans were surveyed by the professional polling firm of Widgerine Associates. 11% of Americans that suffer from indigestion would rather retake the SAT than watch a Jesse Helms filibuster. Why is Michael Moore getting the key to New York City? Stay tuned and find out. You're 42. Yes, I am. You're 42 years old. In your 42 years of life, have you learned that if you sort of stomp your feet a lot, you get your own way? Well, you got to understand, I was the uh, youngest of the family. Right, so you learned so stomping that... worked. Have you noticed how large corporations, if they like stomp their feet and cry and say, you know, like, I'm going to move to Texas or we're going to oh. move to New Jersey, they get these big tax breaks, right? Works. Yeah. Huh? It works, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, stomping works. Corporately, yeah. it works. It works. Well, I got thinking, we're here, new here in New York with our TV show. What if we just told the mayor we're going to move to New Jersey just so we can get a lower tax rate? Move to New Jersey? No. Threaten to move to Threaten New Jersey? Threaten to move. Never leave New York. But how credible are you? Well, we're on TV. Big deal. Back where I come from in Flint, Michigan, for over a decade, General Motors kept threatening to leave if they weren't given big tax breaks from the city. So in the 1980s, Flint gave them a 50% tax reduction on over $1 billion worth of property. The company took the money and <laughs> then closed the plants anyways. It was a sweet deal. It happens all over the country. In Kentucky, Ralston Perina's Bremner Biscuit Plant got $20 million. And in New Mexico, Intel got a $114 million tax break. So when I moved to New York to do this show, I find out that the corporations here are up to the same trick. They threaten to leave town, and then the mayor gives them a whopping tax break, even if he has to close a few libraries or schools to make up the difference. 
So I figured if those big corporations were getting a tax break, why not TV Nation? Good morning and thank you for coming. We, um, we are here today to announce that we are moving TV Nation to the state of New Jersey. Uh, we don't know exactly where yet, but uh, we will do so as soon as a suitable location is found, uh, or unless the city of New York uh, convinces us to stay. We went to see the mayor of New York, Rudolph Giuliani, to get in on the corporate gravy train. We, we are going to spend a half a million dollars <laughs> a week on this show, on this show, in wherever we end up, either New York or New Jersey. So, you know, we're, we're going over to New Jersey to see what they can offer us and, you know, what you can offer us to sort of help us, you know, make up right. our minds. I guess he wasn't really taking us seriously, <laughs> but we can play hardball too. So to make our threat look real, we went over to New Jersey to meet with their officials. And to show we were die-hard New Jersey fans, we took along the big man, Clarence Clemens, sax player to Jersey's most famous native son, Bruce Springsteen. All right, we're ready to do business. Let's do business. Clarence Clemens, I'm from Bruce Springsteen. Hello. Hello. Big man. Hello. Nice to meet you. Clarence Clemens. Let me use one. Okay. I, re I really hate to pay taxes. You do? Yeah. Oh. Sometimes we're a little late. Okay. Any problem with that? No. You don't have any, like, yeah. tickets to the Nets or anything, do you? Jet, the Devils? Any they games? Could, we'll make a couple of phone calls. Yeah? yeah. This is, uh, Clarence. Clarence Clemens. Big man. Yes. From Bruce Springsteen, oh, yeah. the E Street Band. Anything that draws energy. Right. Can potentially be paid for. And everybody has to be helpful. And Yes, indeed. Giving us what we need. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Confident that our flirting with New Jersey was surely grist for the gossip mills all over New York City, I went back to Mayor Giuliani's office to see if he was in a better mood to woo us. All we wanted was that $50 million that CBS got. Good to see you. Mr. Mayor? Now, CBS, right? They got this huge, like, tax break last year. Then Letterman got another tax break for his building. You know, what about NBC? No, no, tax breaks I have to take a very close look at. I, uh, New York City has to reduce taxes for everybody. Yeah. So as far as individual tax breaks, that we have to take a look at. But you know what, I think when, when my bosses at NBC see this, they're going to feel like you're favoring CBS. In other words, looking for a bribe. Uh, no, 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 no. Kind of bribe, I, I didn't but... say that. <laughs> You were a prosecutor at one time, were you? <laughs> want, us to, want us to help with your tickets and stuff like that? No, yeah, no, like no, a couple no, of tickets stuff, to yeah. see the Knicks. A couple of free tickets, that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, is that possible? Uh, no. No? No, and I think, I think we should end the conversation. Yeah. Okay, so he wasn't in a wooing sort of mood that day, but we weren't going to give up that easily. It was back to the swamps of Jersey. So what we have here is, this is New Jersey. Right. And this is New York. Yeah. New York City, yeah. Manhattan, all right? Major difference between the two is? They have a little jealousy, I think, because of the tax savings that all the companies that are moving out. That's right. Like, yeah. for instance? Like Lehman Brothers and Merrill Lynch. And we were working on a stock exchange, to, but that didn't happen. But who's to say what's going to happen down the line? You mean like New York Stock Exchange? Yeah. Might actually this move is, over the, here? Yeah, they were thinking about it. But, wow. Yeah. And we had the proximity to New York. Uh huh. Just how close is that? Would you say? I would. It's ten minutes on a path train. Uh -huh. Three minutes actually. Really? And by jet ski, what would you say? <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Hmm? I couldn't tell you. Have you ever tried it? Nope, never tried it. Would you? No, I wouldn't. Really? Now, if, if I got a couple jet skis when it <laughs> weather got nicer, you wouldn't go do that with me? No, I don't think so. I wonder if CBS had to work this hard when they got that deal for Letterman. We went back to the mayor with more modest demands. How about a proclamation that says, New York loves TV Nation more than it does 60 Minutes? Now that, now that one, uh, as a politician, can't do that one. You can't do that now one? You gotta, you know, you gotta be, um, you gotta be fair Nation's and square. I need, them, I need them all. How about get an audit done of Mike Wallace's taxes? You know, I mean, we think there's, you know, he hasn't been declaring, you know, some of those. Well, you guys really lunches. play, you guys really play hardball. Well, did you know that he's still declaring Chris Wallace as an <laughs> exemption? No, it's true. The water pressure in my building 
it's a little low, and I'm one of these guys, like, when I take a shower... You, you want to get your water pressure pumped pound up? Pound it right on me, yeah. Anything we can do about my water pressure. We have to call your landlord and work and work this out with your yeah. landlord? Yeah. Just would you make a call to my landlord? You yeah. know things can be done in here. That's the attitude. Right. Huh. That's what oh, finally, the progress. The city, you know, thing, you know. Right. You gotta work things out. So maybe afterwards we can sort of see... Can we, we make a deal? Yeah. Who yeah. makes deals better than people in New York, right? Right. New Jersey? We, uh, at the Bayonne Economic Development Corporation, uh, would work with you hand in hand to see to it that you got everything that was possibly available. Anything that any other community could offer you, we'll do. Over here is the Globe Delicatessen, established years and years ago. Cold cuts, soda, milk. We want you here. We like good, clean business enterprises. How's the water pressure over here? You know, I like a shower in the morning that really pounds the crap out of me. Excellent water pressure. This is an area right over here, Michael, that I'm very interested in developing, or having developed, I should say. They tell us it's tremendously loaded with contaminants, although they can't tell us exactly what the contaminants are. But they tell us that we can't build on it. So if we can't build on it, but yet vegetation grows, why can't we make a small golf course? You know, what, I, what I'd like to do is, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like you to call Mayor Giuliani over in New York, tell him we were over here that we're thinking about moving to Bayonne. Commander's office, how can I help you? Yes, hi, how you doing? My name is Mickey McCabe. I'm the president of the Bayonne Economic Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. Is the mayor available? No. Oh, I see. All right, may I leave a message for him, please? Um, okay. Yes, would you please tell him that uh, Michael Moore uh -huh. of TV Nation mm -hmm. is here with me in Bayonne today? Okay. And he is looking to move his show to Bayonne, New Jersey? Okay. Now, Mayor Giuliani knew the threat was real. We we're very honored to give you the key to the city. Well, I'd like you, you to report back to me where this key works, okay? So uh, try it a few places and let me know, because we've got to be careful when we give this out. You haven't given this to too many people. No, no, it may be the third time. Uh-huh. Well, I really, really appreciate this. Good mean, luck. Good thank luck. you, Mr. Mayor. I want thank to see you. you see you really make it. You know, I thought this was the key that opened the room to where all the tax breaks are stored. <laughs> but I've been all over town, and this key doesn't open up a damn thing. Sure, I got a Rudy Giuliani baseball, some tickets to the Knicks, and the water pressure in my building's a lot better these days. But these little incentives aren't good enough, Mr. Mayor. So, Mayor Giuliani, hear us now. Either give us what we want, or we're moving this baby to New Jersey. And this time we mean it. Really. Seriously. The president of the National Rifle Association insisted on having his own camera crew present to shoot us shooting him. <laughs> Why are pro-gun people so paranoid? Ben Hamper's assignment? To spend a morning with that president, Tom Washington. H have you ever uh, shot a, uh, a gun of any kind before? A squirt gun. Okay. Now you shouldn't be seeing any of the barrel. You should just... I forgot to put my... My hearing's bad enough. Too many Ted Nugent concerts. Put the gun up, take it off safe, and then call for your target. They're playing that new Paul Simon album. Get in position. Ah, you ah, ready? I'm going to do it. When you're ready. Pull. I didn't take the safety out. It's OK. <laughs> Pull. God, too low. No, you yeah, shot too below low. it. Ooh, I thought he was going to uh, hit that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, that? You show me. I'm not sure I can hit a bull in the ass with that gun. I'm telling you. I, here, we'll use. I'll use this gun. Pull it. Oh, nice shot, Tom. You want to try this gun? Sure. This one was unlucky for me. I'm sure this one will do much better. Pull. Hey! Hey! hey yeah! Hey! hey. <laughs> Very good. That's great. Okay. Why? I feel like a man. Just between you and me, is there really any need, though, for any of these guns? 
Sure, there's a need for them. I would remind you uh, that if you look at the Constitution and the purpose of the uh, uh, keeping and bearing arms was to keep military-style uh, uh, firearms. That was the whole idea, uh, was so that the uh, citizens could protect themselves from their own government. And I don't, I don't think that that's changed an awful lot, you, quite frankly. You don't in, think in, that's outdated? 200 plus years. No, I do not. So you, you fear no, your own not. government? Is that what you're telling me? I, well, no, I'm not saying that I openly fear our own, our, own, uh, our own government, but I would say this. I think that we, as American citizens, have a responsibility and, yes, duty to be always vigilant. Never before did we have a president uh, who was in lockstep with the anti-gun elements of Congress. Now we have that, uh, that president. So we take it, you'll be voting for another candidate come 96. Well, I think Quayle's looking better all the time. The problem we have in America is we've got too many perpetrators. Every time we put somebody in the front door of a jail, we have to let somebody out the back. The first gun is yet to get up off the table or down off the gun rack and commit a crime. I won't sign any release. No, so we can stop now. I am, I'm, I'm a little, all of a sudden got a little bit more concerned. Is this, is this thing, is this thing on? Coming up, TV Nation's Meryl Marco looks behind the scenes at those talk show guests. I look at the talk shows and I see the people who they have on and I figure I'm at least as sleazy as most of them and I should be on there too. Sometimes almost everybody has been on one of these talk shows or other. Everybody but you and me. Yeah. <laughs> why is that? Yeah, well, sometimes you, don't you wonder why do they go on and confess that stuff? Yeah, why? Well, it's embarrassing. Wonder. Yeah, I thought I would ask them. Think that's a good idea? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you already paid me to do it. Oh, good. Yeah. You have the date? Right here. Right here. Oh. All our guests share the deep, dark secret of an X-rated past. If you watch daytime talk shows, you probably noticed that more and more Americans are eager to air their dirty laundry to a mass audience. Two women who were married to the same man. I'm an actress who moonlights as a call girl. You're crazy. No, you're the crazy one. You've also probably wondered, what's in it for them? Come to expect that 15 minutes of fame, like you expect a decent place to live and a nice income and a pretty wife and whatever else you expect out of life, you expect your 15 minutes of fame. And you're here to help them. If I can. Chris Darren runs the National Talk Show Guest Registry. With a database of over 2,000 talk show hopefuls, he acts as a middleman between people who book the shows and people who want to discuss their idiosyncrasies on national television. I get to have somebody call me up and say, Hi, I'm an alien from another planet. And I go, That's great. What planet are you from? Yeah. I'm from Pluto. Great. Um, what hemisphere? Mm -hmm. You know, how'd you get here? We have, you know, a fellow who, who feels that he's a messiah. We have a prophet who will tell you World War III is coming. I think it's a, it's a real growth industry. Are you on the stock exchange? <laughs> no, no, not yet. Rick Rosner, I guess, could be called the, the smartest male stripper in the country. Among the people in America who have super high IQs, um, I'm the only person who makes his living bouncing bars and being naked. When we met with Rick, he was working as a nude model for an art class at UCLA. Now, you're registered at this National Talk Show Guest Registry? Yeah. Why? Because I look at the talk shows and I see the people who they have on and I figure I'm at least as sleazy as most of them and I should be on there too. I still would like to win the Nobel Prize for Physics. Mm -hmm. I've been working on well, a theory... I think you've taken the right initial steps. Well, I think you're more than on your way. You know, you know Einstein in a patent office... Everybody has to be somewhere while they're thinking about stuff. That's right. Daytime TV is three things, if nothing. It's hooks, angles, and twists. It says here your possible segment title is what? Women who have tried to make a man jealous by sleeping with his friends and co-workers. The registry made Michelle Van Buren a happy woman by getting her a booking on a Geraldo segment entitled Women Who Are Sick of Men and Their Bull. Now, what, what's your problem with men? They're liars, they're cheats, they're manipulators. They're scum. Okay, yes, yes, but what don't you like about them? What don't I like about them? <laughs> <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> the registry got Dr. Stranges on the Jerry Springer show last year, not because of any sexual or personal problems, but because of his unique worldview. You've written a number of books, and this is Stranger at the Pentagon, who was the mysterious visitor with the amazing powers, it says here. Now, the mysterious visitor with amazing powers was this guy, Valiant Thor? Commander Valiant Thor, that's correct. That's his real name, Valiant Thor? That's his name. 
So you believe this man to be from the inside of Venus? Absolutely so. What was this guy doing here? He came to visit Mr. Eisenhower and Mr. Nixon at, at the White House, and then he was housed at the Pentagon for a period ending March 16th, and he was there for three years, ending 1960. He kind of looks like Ricky Ricardo. Now, you sure he isn't, wasn't really just Ricky <laughs> no, Ricardo? Hardly. Who is your most commonly booked guest that you have here? I would have to say that probably Gabby. Gabby's appeared in a red wig and sunglasses as a prostitute and or a failed actress. Donahue, Maury Povich, Hard Copy, A Current Affair, and Geraldo. What were you on Geraldo to discuss? Uh, the first time was how Hollywood destroys people. Now, I'm a result of what Hollywood did to me because I, I ran into the casting couch as an actress so many times I decided to become a professional. So you've actually made a little performing career for yourself as a disguised call girl. Yeah, you could say so that. So in a way, it's it's a little character that you made for yourself, sort of. I suppose so, yeah. A mysterious call girl. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, there are some people who can't even get into the registry. There, the ones that I send back are the the ones from lounge singers. The fellow says, I've been a lounge singer. No lounge singers? Well, if What they, about if they have personal problems? If like they, a personal have an tragedy? they have to have an experience. You can't... It, everything has to be tied to a personal experience. Uh -huh. You know, it can't just be an opinion, like... Um, so they could be a lounge singer if they've, if they've been also a victim of something. Right. If they've been a lounge singer and they have been discriminated against because they were a Frank Sinatra impersonator or something like that, and that's right. what they want to talk about, then their topic is discrimination. So do you think of your whole life as possible talk show segments now? When you're going through life, you're thinking, well, gee, I could go on a show and talk about this. You do? <laughs> yes. Seeing your own life as fodder for talk shows is one thing. What makes a person want to go on TV and do this? A bitch, a bitch, a bitch, a bitch, a bitch, a bitch. A bitch, a bitch, a bitch. You know, Meet the Tucker family. Linda Tucker does not get along with her husband's sister and mother. She tried to make my friends mad. I mean, she's so jealous because I'm single and she's not. They hope going on the Jerry Springer show might facilitate a healthier family dynamic. Well, we know you've been in another house. Well, we know okay. you beat your wife. My brother bought her for $500. No, he did. What's that? Wow. He bought her. We went to central Alabama to see if trashing your loved ones in front of millions of people can be a healing experience. It winded down to being a big problem. He did not help us any. He made it worse for us because we still fuss about it. She has not forgot it. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jerry Springer, if you're watching this, I hope you're getting your thrills because she's putting us all through hell because she will not forget it. Thanks a lot for not helping. She says she's willing. Why do you say she's not? She's Why did you want to talk to Jerry Springer? Well, he's, he seems so sincere, sincere and so compassionate to people. people. But are, were you hoping for actual answers, like yeah. talking to a psychologist? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it made it worse. I was doing it just mainly for me and her. We didn't really mean to get into a big argument. When she gets mad at me and my mother, she won't let us see the kids. Because you called him retarded. I meant to call you retarded. No, I meant to call you retarded. You're the one that's retarded. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. He's not perfect. If I was, I wouldn't be here, would I? I was just totally embarrassed about all this stuff, you know, and, and I was especially hurt by the way they talked to me, you know, and I guess I hurt their feelings, too. I didn't mean to. But... In spite of the Tucker's humiliation, you would go on another show, though, after feeling embarrassed and humiliated? Right. Now, whose show do you want to be? Sally's, about? Oprah, anybody but Jerry Springer. <laughs> Charles, why? What's upsetting you? They go. Would you go on any more of these shows, you know, having, after the way you feel about all this? If I have time, I'll go. <laughs> In fact, since their appearance, the Tucker family has joined Chris Darren's talk show registry. It says here, uh, Barbara Tucker wants to be part of an I Hate My Sister-in-Law talk show segment. <laughs> oh, let me see that. Let me see it. Ooh. Wait a minute. Ooh. Ooh. Now, have you seen this? Have you seen the register? No. What they, what they no, said? No, I haven't. All right, I haven't well, let's look at that. Uh, my, I hate my, my sister-in-law is a dirty, low-down, backstabbing, skinny-ass bitch. Now, you're being funny when you talk like that, aren't you? No, she's mean and mean. She meant it. She's being funny. I can't funny. believe it, Barbara. How dare you? Cut. No, no. Could it be that from here on out in America, we won't consider our problems really solved unless they're aired on a talk show? That I could get on a talk show and perhaps go one-on-one -on -one with my sister, my oldest sister, Yolanda. You can't she's, go one-on-one -on -one with the oldest sister, right Yolanda, now. without Geraldo standing around? No, because she won't listen. <laughs> She won't listen. I feel as if I have an audience behind me, she'll understand or hear me. But you guys never can talk to each other unless there's a host or a hostess there? <laughs> I reckon. Are talk shows now America's uncredentialed family counselors? Or are people hoping dysfunction can now be a ticket to stardom? Honestly, I'm attempting a career in broadcasting. I'm hoping a program director will see me. 
My ambition is to have my own television program. I get to be in front of a camera, therefore I'm no longer a frustrated actress. <laughs> we want to get discovered. We want, we want our own show. Here, Pat, so baby can do a good commercial. You don't know the whole damn You're You, drink, you drink beer and he stays drunk all, right. all the damn well, time. So you have show business aspirations. That's why I want to get in show biz. You go to hell. Any producers out there? We're waiting. Oh, no, Stay tuned for more of Gun Night on TV Nation as Karen Duffy takes aim. Prizer, the president of the Federation of New York State Pistol and Rifle Clubs, took Karen Duffy to a private shooting range hidden in a basement in New York City. So what is your business? You help people get pistol licenses here in the city of New York? We, we operate as pistol license consultants, mm -hmm. and we try to help people get licenses. But I must tell you, it's become very, very difficult in the city of New York. Only the rich and the famous mm -hmm. uh, get licenses easily. So what celebrities do have guns? Uh, we have Howard Stern. Howard packs a nice little 38 caliber revolver. Mm -hmm. Bill Cosby, he packs a little Beretta 25 caliber. That's kind of like a Saturday night special. Robert De Niro. Under his real name or Travis Pickle? Robert De Niro. And of course, Joan Rivet. Uh, we have William Buckley, author Ox Sulzberger, the publisher of the New York Times. And of course, the New York Times has always been rabidly against individuals having firearms. And yet, hypocritically, he packs heat. Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump, he's not out there collecting rent in high crime neighborhoods. And yet, he is also packing no less than 230 caliber revolvers. That seems to be the American way. You better go and get a gun. If you can't get licensed, and it's very difficult to get a licensed gun, you better get something, even if it's illegal. The criminal underclass are cowardly. One particular friend of mine was actually standing at the urinal, and without missing what he had to do, he drew the gun and he said, hold it. The mere display of the holstered weapon is enough for the aggressor to say, Cool, baby, cool. Everything's cool. Everything's fine. <laughs> this guy was a real joker. Cool, baby, cool. Everything's cool. Everything's fine. Had he not had the weapon just to show, that might have been his last moment of relief. Uh, these are not brave individuals. They're cowards. They are the underclass. They're worthless. This is called the bad guy target, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it simulates a little bit of an aggressive situation. You really have to clear the mind when you're doing this. So it's tremendously relaxing. Clear your mind. Empty your mind. Empty your mind. Concentrate on what you're going to do. Mm -hmm, which you basically is focus. Kill, kill, kill. Kill, kill, kill. Okay, well, I'm going to give you a little motivation, okay? Okay. You're going to have to rescue somebody who looks vaguely familiar. There you go. Well, this certainly gives me more inspiration. Take a look. Anything in this area is going to drop you, man, mm -hmm. which will more than do the job. Okay. I like being a hero. Hey, everybody! Let's have some fun. You only live once, and when you're dead, you're gone. Let the good time roll. Let the good time roll. Don't care if you're young or old. Get in the groove and let the good time roll. <laughs> Point five percent of Americans that voted for Clinton believe that they will someday be told just what Victoria's Secret is. 98% of Bush voters believe they will never know. We get to the bottom of the caning commotion in the land where it all began. 
written. Naughty, 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 oh, naughty, I'm naughty, sorry. naughty boy. Well, that's our show for tonight. Did you have a good time? I had a great time, Michael. Great time. There you go. You're a great student. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's been an honor to be part of Gun Night here on TV well, Nation. You need to learn. If you're going to hold a gun, you need to know how to hold it correctly. And, and you it, did that well. And if you're going to hang out with a congressman's wife... You ought to know how to shoot. America, thanks for tuning in to TV Nation. Coming up next... the names of the people who live next door to you? Um, actually, I don't. She's mm -hmm. no. Yeah, like three years ago, moved in? No, maybe ten. Ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, boy. You have no idea I don't what... talk to my neighbors. <laughs> you think it's safe out in Long Island? It's very safe. Uh -huh. Quiet? Yes. Peaceful? Yes. Serial killers? Not that I know of. Let's say you heard a chainsaw in the middle of the night. What would you do? I'd be questioning why it's going on in the middle of the night, just because he's... And then you go back to peace. bed. But yes, yes. We went out to Long Island, and we sort of moved in to see what the neighborhood is like. Oh, you, know? you did? Yeah. 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 So uh, take a look. And... Did you ever notice when they arrest a serial killer, the neighbors come out and say what a nice, quiet guy he was? A very gentle guy, the kind of a guy that would help me bring packages into the house. John Wayne Gacy murdered 33 young men while living in a quiet, suburban Chicago neighborhood. So what kind of neighbor was he? Very good neighbor. Jeffrey Dahmer kept body parts in a drum in his tiny Milwaukee apartment with no complaints from the neighbors. John Esposito used a bat... Put one in the bottom. Okay. Thanks. Stay with me, okay? Okay. Don't leave me. All right. All, All right. you have to say is pull. What's the word? Pull. Pull. Loudly so he can hear you. Pull! Did I get it? No. I didn't start no. hunting with my husband until I figured out I was going to be alone from September to January, and I didn't think that was neat. That's exactly uh, right. Really? So if he was exactly. going to be a hunter, That's I think right. women tend to do what their husbands do. It's an enjoyment. If they love them. Mm -hmm. a so if you love your husband, and if he shoots guns, if he hunts, he's a hunter. You join him. Get right out there beside him. and join him, right? That's, right? That's what keeps families together. And if That's your husband's, right. if your husband's a congressman and he has a gun, you just join right up. She shoots. She scores. <laughs> Whoa! Which of, which of the following most closely describes your husband? Semi-automatic. Muzzle loader. Saturday night special. Lever action. Semi-automatic. Semi-automatic. And, and would you describe him more uh, as a shotgun or a rifle? A kind of Both. Uh, more of a rifle. You know, I, I always thought the best way to go duck hunting was like with a flamethrower. Because then <laughs> you get the bird and cook the meat all in one. That's Just an cool. idea. <laughs> How many congressmen's wives would you say shoot guns? Good evening, this is TV Nation. I'm Michael Moore, and I'm here with Susie Brewster, wife of Congressman Bill Brewster from Oklahoma. If I were going to shoot you, I would probably shoot you right here, because I think that's a vital spot. Yeah, well, don't get any ideas. If I just wanted to wound you, I might aim at other parts, but you're pretty dangerous. You know why I don't want to shoot this one? It looks too much like the network executives I have to deal with. <laughs> I'm just kidding, okay? You know, Americans love their guns, and I'm an American, and I love my gun. And tonight, myself and the other correspondents of TV Nation will take you on a journey through guns, 
in America. with Michael Moore. Meryl Marco talks to those talk show people. Guys, you called him retarded. I meant to call you retarded. No. I don't know. The first time I had about 20, but that's all the capacity I had. Mm -hmm. And the second time, um, I had about the same number. What, what do you do in Washington? Um, I'm legislative director for Congressman Brewster. He's a good member to work for. Yeah, that's what taught I Taught me how to shoot. Yeah? The congressman <laughs> taught you how to shoot? Yeah, he did. And he's taught his wife. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And he's progressing through the, our whole staff, I think. Really? Pull! 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 Who's a better shot, you or your husband? Oh, he is. He's been shooting for 45 years. The congressman? Yes. How long has he been shooting? How old was he when he first shot? Three. Three years old? Yeah. Shot off his daddy's knee. Well, he shot off his daddy's knee. Where's the other one? Huh? Where'd he go? Oh. How did I do today? What would you say? You did well. You did very well. You're not a, a novice marksman, but you did well. I did well, but, you did well. but could I be a congressional wife? No. Hmm, that would be Sorry. hard. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you had an Sorry. operation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hard. <laughs> A congressional spouse, but not a congressional, yeah, a congressional wife. Spouse. Yeah. <laughs> and we need more women in Congress anyways, right? There we go. There we go. Coming up on TV Nation, do you really know who your next door neighbor is? I meant to call you return. Wait a second. Michael Moore threatens to move the show to New Jersey, and the mayor of New York is on the spot. We're going over to New Jersey to see what they can offer us, and, you know, what you can offer us to sort of help us, you know, make up right. our minds. After serial killers like John Wayne Gacy and Jeffrey Dahmer, what if a very strange man moved into the house next door? Wouldn't the neighbors notice? <laughs> Well, many years ago, we were we all had cesspools and we all got hooked up. Maybe that house was never hooked up. And be sure to join us for more of Gun Night on TV Nation. Whoa! That was cool. I caught up with congressional wives Susie Brewster and Cecile Tauzin to talk about guns, sex, and politics. Your ultimate goal is to just smatter it. Mm -hmm. Michael, when What's they that? just when you just dis they disintegrate to gunpowder and the whole sky explodes, that's the ultimate. That's the real It's like high. a firecracker, you know, like they burst out all the stars. Yeah. Just powder. You know, that's when you know you've arrived. Yeah. Okay, I want to get there. Yeah. And I want you to help me. You just put one in 